Welcome back to 1834. Laborde is winning two games to one and it's the first to win five games that will take this sixth match. Today's guest commentator is my real life chess friend, Raka. Now, Raka watches almost every video that I put out and he's always got very positive and good constructive feedback to give. So I really appreciate that. <laughs> Thank you, Raka. Uh, Raka has been involved in an accident recently, so I hope you get better soon. Everybody needs a Raka in their life. Anyway, strangely, Le Bourdonnais once more has the white pieces for the fourth time in a row. There may be a very good reason for that, but I will explain in a future video. For now, he starts with e4. We have e5, knight to f3, knight to c6, bishop to c4, bishop to c5, and b4, the Evans gambit. And all gentlemen must accept a gambit, as everybody knows, even Rucker. And McDonald is a gentleman, so he accepts. We have c3 attacking the bishop, so the bishop retreats and Le Bourdonnais castles. d6 letting the light square bishop out and d4 into the center leading to a pawn exchange. McDonald brings his bishop back to b6, he's lining up against the king on his castled square. Now last time in game number 3, Le Bourdonnais played bishop to b2 and went on to win after 41 moves. This time he plays h3, which he normally does play, but not this early. Last time we saw it, though, was in match 5, game number 8, played by McDonald, and they go on as in that game. h6, kind of symmetrical on the wing here. Bishop to b2 now, and previously, Le Bourdonnais as black played the queen to e7, and then lost after only 25 moves. This time he brings out his second knight to e7, and the game continues with d5 attacking the knight this knight goes across to a5 attacks the bishop so the bishop <laughs> the bishop comes back to d3 and mcdonald takes the opportunity to castle Le Bourdonnais continues his development by bringing his second knight out to c3, and McDonald should probably think about developing his light square bishop, but instead he plays his knight a second time, and it goes to g6. Now we have queen to d2, and indeed Le Bourdonnais has completed his development whilst McDonald is lagging behind. Again, he should probably get his light square bishop out, but instead he plays c5. Now, I know that Rucker knows the en passant rule because I've seen him play it before. Here, Le Bourdonnais could capture en passant and remove this pawn from the board. If he doesn't do this, this pawn is going to be passed and maybe it will be trouble later on. And indeed, Le Bourdonnais doesn't capture en passant. He instead moves his knight over to a4 and the game continues. f6 from McDonnell and Le Bourdonnais captures the bishop on the b6 square and the pawn captures back. Le Bourdonnais here brings his left-hand rook across to e1, perhaps trying to drive some power up these two central files. But meanwhile, Rucker says that McDonald really needs to think about his development and get this bishop out to the d7 square. But McDonald isn't listening. He instead brings his knight out to e5. And unfortunately for him, this allows Le Bourdonnais to build a little bit of momentum. He starts out with a knight exchange, the f-pawn captures, and then he drives his f-pawn up the file. And this leads to a pawn exchange and then a rook exchange with the white queen ending up on f4. McDonald finally brings his queen off the back rank and Le Bourdonnais goes for the rook lift. He's planning to come across here and threaten the king this way. But in the meantime, McDonald brings his bishop to d7. At last, says Rucker, and as planned, Le Bourdonnais brings the rook across and threatens the king. How does MacDonald react? Well, he pushes his pawn to threaten the queen, but not really because this pawn is pinned and can't capture. And Le Bourdonnais even compounds matters here by pushing his pawn, and again, this pawn can't be captured either because of the pin. What does MacDonald do then? He brings his rook across to attack the queen. Now you notice that for Le Bourdonnais, he does have three attackers on this pawn, and there are only two defenders. But if you were to capture with this pawn, obviously this rook is going to grab the queen. So Le Bourdonnais retreats his queen back to d2 and the game continues. In this position, Le Bourdonnais still has the three attackers upon this pawn with only the two defenders. But this time the white queen is not on this square being attacked by the rook. So it will be safe to capture this pawn for Le Bourdonnais. So what does MacDonald do? He pushes straight past to g4 and this leaves a fatal problem. I'm sure you can spot it. This pawn is now undefended and Le Bourdonnais captures it with the queen, threatens checkmate in the corner. So uh, Rucker doesn't think very much of McDonald's chances now. Yeah, nah, yeah, nah. So what does McDonald do? He blocks with his queen. <laughs> he uh, offers the queen exchange, but Le Bourdonnais is not having that. He comes back for a check and the king moves out to f7. 
Now, another unfortunate aspect of this position is that this bishop is x-raying the queen. So the board may just pushes the pawn and the queen is exposed. Donald moves it back to g8, perhaps hoping for a queen exchange, but of course, the board may ignores this and pushes the pawn once more. It's check and the bishop is fought. The king has to move. The only place it can go is back to e8. And now we have bishop to g6 with check. And now Macdonald is going to lose even more pieces. The king cannot move anywhere, so something has to block. Let's try with the rook. Well, if you do that, of course, either the pawn or the bishop's capturing, and it's going to be an immediate fork on the king and the queen. So the king has to move out of the way. The pawn is going to capture the black queen whilst promoting, and the black king is going to recapture the second queen, but Macdonald is completely destroyed here. What are, what are the alternatives? Well, you could block with the queen and lose your queen immediately, but again, with the queen slicing through here, the only choice is to lose your rook as well, and this is the position after all of that. Again, completely destroyed. There is one more alternative, and that's to use the black queen to capture the bishop, but again, you're just losing your queen. The king might be able to run for a little while, but this dark square bishop is coming in to uh, add some power to white's attack, and it's not going to last very long. So... It was in this position that Madonna decided enough was enough and resigned the game. It's now 3-1 to Le Bourdonnais, so Madonna has a bit of catching up to do. Maybe next time he will get the chance to play as white. It's very odd that Le Bourdonnais has been white four games in a row, but there may be a very good reason for that. Thank you for watching, thank you to Raka, and I'll see you again next time.